Welcome to Tikva Radio Show, The Sound of Hope. I'm Liliana Inez, your host. Someone once said that God speaks to people in different ways. Did you ever have dreams, visions, or a special experience in which you felt God was speaking to you? The Torah tells us that Abraham, Jacob, and many others heard and experienced God. Does Adonai speak to people like that nowadays? On Tikva Radio, we interview people who have had an encounter with the God of Israel, a special experience. Some have even had personal miracles, and all have found the Messiah of Israel. Stay tuned to Tikva Radio Show and hear an amazing story of someone who was encountered by God. Welcome, Mishpoha. We are so glad you joined us today. Today, our guest is Joey Benami. Welcome to Tikva Radio Show, Joey. Glad to have you here with us. Thank you for having me, and it's a pleasure to be with you, Lydia. So, Joey, um, you are uh, the first person we have ever interviewed that has Sephardic roots. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, I was uh, about 29 years old, and uh, uh, I had someone approach me, and he said, um, uh, did you know that you may have a Sephardic background? And I said to him, well, uh, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> uh, and he gave me some information, told me the story of what happened in Spain. And when he mentioned that, I, I did know that my, my father and all of his uh, parents, grandparents, they were all from Spain. So that kind of resonated with me. Uh, and so I embarked in a search that took me four years for me to realize that this was actually true. Well, and, um, another interesting thing is that um, you were born in another country, and I wanted to know if you could share a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. I was actually born and raised in Venezuela, South America. And uh, like I said, my, my, uh, on my dad's side, uh, they, they were all from Spain. Uh, and growing up in Venezuela in the 70s and the 80s was uh, a beautiful experience. Unlike today, today Venezuela is a very troubled country. Uh, but when I grew up, it was, a, it was a magical place. It was a beautiful place. Uh, and of course, I grew up 30 minutes from the Caribbean Ocean, so I had a lot of fun uh, as a kid and as a youth. That's wonderful. So uh, did your father um, talk about his Jewish roots uh, from Spain? I mean, how many generations? You know, unfortunately, uh, not even he was aware of it. Uh, we, I did not grow up with him. I grew up with my grandmother, my maternal grandmother. Uh, so my connection, uh, not only to him, but to his family, to extended family, I remember meeting his mother, my grandma, when I was about six years old, and that's the last time I, I remember hearing uh, from her. Later on, she passed away. Um, and uh, But we, we didn't have, uh, or let I me mean, put it this way, the, the knowledge, which is the common thing that happens with uh, Sephardics is that it, it is lost. The knowledge of their Jewishness in many, many cases is it, lost and it is not passed down uh, to, to their children. In your, uh, the beginnings of your life, um, was there any heart uh, for God at, you know, in your early years? You know, there, there was, and it was remarkable because uh, somehow the fact of not growing with my dad, rather than sending me on, on a path of, uh, uh, I don't know, that, you know, that many people go through uh, self-destruction, uh, struggling, and, and all of this, it just placed in me a desire to, to really understand what a father was. Um, I never doubted that God existed. I never doubted that the Bible was the word of God. I had never read a Bible though, uh, but uh, I, I, under, I related to, to God, the little that I knew of him, I related to him as a father. So that theme of, of fatherhood was really ingrained in me and he used that to, to really keep me close to him, to be able to heal me, even through the difficulties I went through with our, 
growing without a, a, a dad. Um, and, uh, and that when the, the first times that I began to hear the word of God, it was, to me, it was just phenomenal. It was just so personal. And, uh, it, it was a thirst. It was like, I, I knew my destiny was in, in this book. Well, you're, um, you're touching on a really important, um, subject. How early in your life, uh, did your father, did he leave your home? I mean, it was actually, my parents actually never married. Um, and, uh, my, my dad was a musician, uh, he was, he was about five, six years older than, than my mom and that uh, neither of the two was actually ready to be a parent. Uh-huh. So, uh, both grandmas got together and they said, well, you know, you guys can have your messed up life. Uh, but the boys are going to stay with us. Uh, by then it was my brother and I, and, um, so I saw, I remember seeing my dad when I was six years old and then not seeing him again when I was 12. Uh, and then at 15, I reached out to him and then we began to develop a relationship that as a matter of fact, became a very healthy, very strong relationship in my young adult years. Um, but one of the things that God used to heal me and to never be bitter towards my father was that, um, my, my dad was a musician. So, uh, I, I love music and I aspired to be a musician myself. And so I had a great admiration for my dad and that kind of healed a lot of things. It helped me forgive. It helped me uh, relate to him, uh, not out of bitterness or anything, but, uh, I was really proud of my dad. Uh, because he was a cool dad, you know, how many kids could say that their dad was a musician, so. Right, and that was a commonality for you. So early on in your life, um, you said that you did have a connection with God. How did that start for you? You know, uh, I I can't pinpoint a time when it started because I, uh, it was like it was there naturally for me. Uh, as far back as I can go, I remember being... Uh, I remember being 12 years old and I wanted to be a father. I mean, even at that age, I knew the examples that I, that I could see around me were not the best. Um, but, uh, I felt like, uh, intuitively, like I was going to be good at that. I, I, I can't explain it. And I remember one time, um, I asked God, God, would you, would you show yourself to me? I promise I won't tell anybody. I, I actually said those words. Oh, that's I interesting. I won't tell. You know, like, I'm not going to spill out your secret, but would you <laughs> show yourself to me? And um, I knew that even though that didn't happen, I knew that was a, in my spirit, I, in my soul, I knew it was, a, it was a significant moment. It was a significant connection. And I actually think he answered that prayer, that desire of mine a little later on in my life. All right. And you said that um, you felt that God was um, integral to helping you heal from the lack of uh, having a father. Um, How did that happen for you? Yeah, it was what I think happened is I had a strong sense of an ideal of who God was and what a father should be. I knew that a father should be like the way he is. Um, and, and that was just an ideal that I believe he placed in, in me that guided me and helped me. So when I, as I, you know, began to, to grow up and, uh, I remember one time I came from school, I was 15 years old. I came from school, closed the door in my, in my bedroom, threw myself in the bed crying and crying out to God and asking him, God, why didn't I have a father? Why didn't I have a father? But what happened afterwards is what's remarkable that I was able to get up from there and, and, and kept on living my life, knowing that I have this connection with God, that he was my father and everyone needs to have that connection, whether they have a physical, uh, biological father present or not, everyone needs to have that connection that God is our real father. And because we all have needs that our human parents can fulfill. And, um, 
and, and I actually had that fulfilled in my life, the, the presence of God in my life, even from childhood, and uh, to bring me comfort, you know, like at that time when I was 15 years old, to give me a sense that there is hope for me and that things are going to be better because God somehow is, is as a good father, he will make it so uh, for me. Right. And the scriptures actually talk about God being a good father. Right. And, and that God wants us to call him uh, our father. He, he wants us to see him as, as our loving father and um, one that can guide us and care for us. And you're right. There's no human father, no matter how good he is, that could ever be as good a father as, as God is. So um, your relationship with God started more uh, during your teen years, it sounds like, but you had already had a knowledge of God uh, before that. And how, it, how did that happen? Did you have uh, grandmas that had faith in God? I, actually, no. Uh, I was the very first person to develop uh, really a relationship, a meaningful relationship with God uh, in my life. and. Um, uh, because of this sensitivity that I had, I, I was already thinking I, I wanted to dedicate my life to God. And, um, you know, I'm a misguided youth, so I thought maybe through, uh, maybe I can be a politician and help revolutionize my country, or maybe I can, uh, you know, I grew up in the Catholic Church, even though I, it was amazing because growing up in the Catholic Church, I had a sense of that I didn't belong. <laughs> Um, and uh, I, I would go there uh, when I was 16. I began to go there a, a weekly, really. Um, and but I only went there to hear them read the Bible because I had never read a Bible. That was the very first time I ever heard anybody reading a Bible. I didn't believe in the statues, I didn't believe in the priests. I thought they were just men, just like me. But it was the scripture, the reading of the scripture that really captured my heart. And uh, so I was, uh, I was prepared when I began to relate to my father again. I was, you know, I had forgiven him. I understood. Uh, and, and I was ready to pick up where we were at and just, you know, go on from there. And as to your relationship with God, um, you started having... Uh did you start having conversations and prayer? I would say uh, what I can remember, uh, I would say um, probably even six years old. That's the earliest I, I really remember. Um, just uh, uh, just having a sense of, uh, uh, of an ideal uh, in, in my heart because I didn't have scripture at the time, but I had this ideal in my heart that God was a certain way. God was perfect as a father, as a God, as, you know, uh, even with um, disasters going on in the world and all those things. It was like I always had a natural trust that God was good and and uh, there was an explanation for the things I didn't know, but I didn't have to put him on trial, so to speak, and that, that he was trustworthy. Um, and then it began to develop uh, until... In my, in my teen years, then there was a there was a point where it, it was a decisive point in my life, in my experience with him. So you said um, you sent me your bio. You said that um, something happened to you at seventeen uh, concerning Messiah. Yeah, I think it's a uh, you know I entered high school at sixteen, and then I was exposed to exposed to new philosophies, to new, you know, almost like a grown-up world. Uh, and then at the same time, uh, I, you know, I began to, to, to think, okay, what am I going to do with my life? And uh, I really was exploring ways in which I could give my life to God. Um, but the, the avenues that I knew, they were less than desirable for me. So it, it was this dissatisfaction with uh, the avenues I had. Uh, to express that, but yet the desire to to have my life count for something for God. And um, then at, around that time, that's when I discovered that they actually read the Bible in the Catholic Church, you know, just a little bit of it. And so I began to go there just so that I can hear them read the Bible because I, 
I, I mean, I, it never even occurred to me that I could go to a bookstore and buy a Bible, but that was the way I knew. I knew, and um, so I, I think it was those catalysts, you know, the, that exposed to 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 the world, yet knowing that as an adult, as a young man now, I wanted to decide what am I going to do with my life, and I wanted I wanted my life to count for God. You wanted to see something good coming out of it. You didn't want to go through all these other avenues that you know could be destructive. So what was the pivotal point that brought you to faith and Messiah? Well, what it was is that uh, um, uh, some college students in our neighborhood had started a, uh, a Bible study for youth, for kids my age. And um, uh, I didn't know it until I came one time to hang out with my friends and they were having an argument uh, regarding scripture and and the idols in the Catholic Church, and um, and so there were two groups, and uh, they were all my friends. I came in late, so I was kind of observing the the back and forth, and I decided that wow, those guys that are speaking based on the Bible, they are right. You know that we're not supposed to worship uh, God through idols, and so I stayed with them, and they invited me, and I attended their. Uh, their meeting, and when I at that meeting, they they spoke to me about Yeshua dying for my sin, and for the very first time, to me, it was like, wow, you mean my sin actually separate me from God? Even though I love Him and I know He loves me, it was like He was reaching out to me and saying, there is a problem in between you and me. It's called sin. I have done everything possible to solve that problem so that you can be with me. So it was a, although it was a sense of, of lostness, it was a sense of disconnect with God that I had, it really lasted just a brief moment because I, I, I knew, I understood that Yeshua had died to solve that disconnect, that distance that I felt with God. It was like, I, I love you, God, but I don't know how to come to you in the way that's pleasing to you. And he showed me that, yes, that's why Yeshua died and rose again to give me the life that qualifies me to stand before God and, and truly be accepted and loved and receive all the benefits that he has for me. That's wonderful. So tell me, um, so at that point you, you gave your heart to Yeshua? You, you said a prayer. Is that what happened? You know, Liliana, it was actually the, the person that was sharing with me later on actually told me, uh, she said, I, I thought you were just going along with it and just joking because it was so easy. <laughs> and that's how ready my heart <laughs> was. Uh, they, you know, they, they explained to me why Yeshua died. And I said, yeah, I, I accepted it. They, they asked me, you know, if they told me, if you believe, uh, then uh, you become uh, a child of God and, and he becomes your, your father in a, in a true and personal sense that you're born again. And I said, yeah, that's, that's what I want. And uh, so, so they asked me, okay, would you like to pray to receive Yeshua as your Savior, your Messiah? And I said, yeah, absolutely. And I did. And, uh, you know, like I said, they thought I was, it was so easy that they thought I was just playing along. Yeah. Uh, and I remember that, you know, it was, it was amazing because I went home and, you know, growing up without a dad and I had, listen, I had everything I needed, every fancy shoes, every fancy clothing. I was protected. I was loved. I was cared for. My grandmother did a, an awesome job of, of raising my brother and I, but I was alone uh, and I needed my real parents. And, um, but that night they told me, listen, if you believe that Yeshua is the son of God, the Messiah, then God, the father comes to dwell in you. God, the son come, comes to dwell in you and the Holy spirit comes to dwell in you. And I went home with a sense that I wasn't alone anymore, that God was truly not only with me, but he was inside of me that he had come to dwell in me. And they showed me in the scripture where he said that. And it was just phenomenal. It, was just, it just transformed my life and brought so much more healing. 
That's wonderful. Tell me, how did your life change? You know, immediately I had a hunger for the Word of God. Uh, they they promised me, you know, we're gonna we're gonna get you a Bible. Uh, in about a week, next week when you come, we're going to give you a Bible. And I was like, well, you know what? I really can't wait for next week. So I grabbed the next guy I knew and I said, hey, dude, can I borrow your Bible? <laughs> and I don't know what he did that week without his Bible, but I knew I had a Bible. I had to get one. And I began to, to just read the scripture. It was so, I was so thirsty and so hungry for it, just receiving everything. And uh, I began to share with my, with my family. You know, I'm a 17-year-old kid. They were like, okay, like, this is another fad. You know, you 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 wanted to be a, a, a baseball player, then you want to be a musician. Well, now you want to be a believer. Okay, this is going to go away too. Uh -huh. uh, but it never did, and uh, and uh, I began to um, really see changes in, in in my life where I would submit everything to God and uh, really had a power to please God that I didn't have before. I had a love for God before. But I didn't have the power to make it happen. But now the power had come to dwell inside of me, and it, and it just transformed the, the my outlook in life, the sense of joy I had, the sense of hope, uh, the sense that uh, I had a purpose in this life, and uh, and that it was going to to come to pass because God was the one empowering that that dream that He had placed in my life. Well, that's interesting because so many people, you know, want to do something good to make a difference or want to um, feel that their life has meaning. Uh, and there is people uh, way older than, than 17 that feel lost. And here you are, 17, and already feeling that, you know, God's directing your life. God's giving you purpose. You know, you're connecting with him. And that's yeah, huge. That's right. That's right. And, and it is never too late, really. Um, the 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 problem is the lies that we've accumulated through through our lives. You know, the the mistakes we made, they kind of pile up. It's like having a messy room instead of having a room that you know you just need to make up your bed and and sweep a little bit. But you know, we may have clothes all over the place. We may may have it may take a, a little longer. Uh, but you know, to 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 come to the place where we feel like okay, I can, my dreams are going to come true now. But but God has the power to, in one encounter with God, in one word, in through one scripture, in in a prayer, He can make such progress in your life. Because Scripture says in the Tanakh, we read that. Uh, he makes up for the years that the locust has eaten, that the, what was stolen from us. And these are years that, that have been stolen from us. And, and uh, I mean, you talk about even our Sephardic background in, in my family. These are, these are identities that were stolen from us. And God had right. made it in such, a, such progress in, in my life and in my children's life that uh, uh, we, we feel like uh, the restoration it has been a tremendous path that God, God catches you up to where you were supposed to be. So it's never too late. That's right. God can um, restore things that you feel like have been uh, lost or stolen or missed. That's really right. awesome. So um, as you're growing up and you're seeing a change in yourself, did your family see that change? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. For instance, uh, I began experimenting with alcohol when I was 13. And uh, uh, by the time I was, uh, uh, you know, I'm 15, 17, I'm, uh, then uh, all of a sudden they, they see me and I'm, and I'm not in a, in a religious, super religious way, but I'm just, I'm still hanging out with them. I'm still in their parties and stuff. But but I'm not drinking, and um, uh, I'm not, uh, you know, pursuing the the things that the you know my mouth is is that I don't have a dirty mouth, uh, and uh, uh, you know my my time is spent uh, with people who 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 are people of you know that are pouring good things in my life. Um, I I kept my friends. Uh, who, who really never came to 
to come to come to know Yeshua the way I did. I kept my friendship with them, but it was an influence that I would exert on them. You know, people would come to me and ask me for advice because they knew that uh, um, I had something. I had, I had a message, you know, that I could uh, influence them in a positive way. Uh, I, I gained the respect of, of even my elders, even people uh, in my family who were older than me, my uncles, aunts. Uh, I had the respect of fellow students, you know, even as I continued in, in high school and then went on to college. Uh, all of these things were signs that uh, the Lord had given me wisdom, that he had given me a life that really was was uh, worth uh, uh, as an example to, to other people. Because they could see that you had a connection with God. Yeah, that, yes. that's right. And I even had the privilege of... Uh, of uh, bringing both my parents, my father and my and my mother, to faith in Yeshua, uh, and then to disciple them, you know, to teach them the beginning stages of how to how to live faith in in Yeshua in a, in a practical way, uh, and um, you know that that was a great privilege. Uh, That's uh, wonderful, that I, that, that I had. That's great. Um, so our time is uh, coming to an end, but I wanted to ask you, um, there's somebody out there that's listening to you and, and um, feel that they might want to take uh, that chance they, um, to, to give their lives to Yeshua or they, you know, um, they feel that uh, this is something that they need in their life. They need a father figure. Maybe they, their dad left or something happened similar to you. Yes. Uh, you know, especially for, for, for Jewish people, uh, we, we, we have a, we have a special relationship with God. It, it's a natural thing that we have a special connection with God that we are, that we are to store, that we are to experience and, and share with the nations. Uh, but that relationship needs to be activated and, 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 and grown and developed in the way that God does that. Uh, you know, it needs to be God the one who, who takes the initiative. Uh, if we do it on our own, it's going to be frustrating. And, and I'm sure a lot of people have experienced this with God. You experience disappointment with God. You experience frustration. Uh, you see uh, religious figures, and uh, uh, it somehow it 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 helps for for a while. It helps for certain things, but for the deep pain, it, it doesn't. For for the nights alone, it doesn't. For the deep dissatisfaction, for the, for the deeper questions in life, and for the whys, it doesn't. It it doesn't satisfy. Because it is meant to be, number one, is God is the one who is supposed to take the initiative so that we need to be in a position of receiving. We need to be the ones who receive from him. Uh, and the way that God has done that is through his son, the Messiah. We know that it is through the Messiah that God has set up a voice to speak to us. He's, it, it, the Tanakh says, the Torah says, that he is going to send one who is like Moses. Uh, Isaiah speaks of one who who bore our sin on 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 our behalf uh, to set us free. So we need to number one receive this relationship with God through His Son. This is the way that God has established it. It's the way that He has set it up so that through Yeshua through the sacrifice that he did, we just came off Yom Kippur, right? Through the sacrifice that he did, we are cleansed. We need to receive this cleansing uh, that is not humanly brought, that is not just through prayer, but it is God taking the initiative and us receiving as son, as daughters. And this opens up a, a new and living and wonderful relationship with God through Yeshua uh, that it, it just comes inside of you, and now it is something that is birthed it within you. And so because uh, of that setup, because of God doing it inside of you, then there is power to overcome. There is forgiveness. There is true and lasting joy. 
there is true satisfaction in life, a, a real receiving of what God meant all along in our scriptures. Uh, and when we take that step and receive Yeshua as our Messiah, as our uh, Savior, then all of these wonderful promises that we read of in the Bible, they are activated in us and they become alive and our lives are transformed and changed. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. And um, we are going to finish up our program right now. Um, the I think you have a scripture and we want to finish with that. Would you like to share that scripture that uh, you were saying was special to you? Yeah, this is a scripture that uh, God spoke to me right the very day that I, that I placed my faith in Yeshua, that I, that I say, Yeshua, I, uh, I, I, I bow to you. You are the son of God. I receive you. And it was amazing because it was the same wording. This is in the gospel of John. Uh, verses uh, 11, chapter 1, verses 11 and 12, it, it says, He came to his own. That speaks of the Jewish people. Yeshua came to his own people. He came to us. Uh, but his own did not receive him. And that's where many of us are today. We have not received him. And, and I was just speaking of just receiving from the Father, allow him to take the initiative and we be the ones who receive and then verse 12 says, but whoever did receive him. So when we do receive him, it says that those trusting in his name, in the name of Yeshua, then to these, he gave the right to become children of God. The right to become this right speaks of the power, speaks of the transformation, speaks of the overcoming of whatever it is that's holding us back. Uh, and, and so it is through receiving the one who came to to us to bless us first uh, by receiving him then we have the power to overcome in this life isn't that amazing that Job Benami had a sense of God's goodness when he was a young boy of six and later for him to realize how important it was to be a good father at the young age of 12 that is wisdom beyond his years. Now, how could that be? Well, I believe that Adonai was seeking Joey to show him the love of the father that Joey was missing. And that's really backed up by the Jewish Bible. From beginning to end, God speaks about the importance of children through his scriptures, because children are important to God. When I was young, there was a negative adage that said children should be seen and not heard. But that is so opposite of what the Jewish scriptures tell us. Psalm 127 verse 3 says, Behold, children are a heritage of Adonai. The fruit of the womb is a reward. They are as arrows in the hand of a mighty man. So are the children of one's youth. Happy is a man whose quiver is full. They will not be put to shame when they speak with their enemies at the gate. God even says that the things that come out of the mouths of babies and toddlers is important. The words that come, their expression as well. Psalm 8 verse 3 says, Out of the mouths of babies and toddlers, you establish power because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. Yeshua said, If you have seen me, you have seen the Father, because I only do what the Father shows me to do. So he would do the things the Father would do. In the New Covenant, we see Yeshua speaking about children and how special they are to God. In the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verses 13 through 14, we read, Then little children were brought to Yeshua so that he may, might lay hands upon them and pray for them. The disciples rebuked those who brought them, but Yeshua said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. 
Again, in Matthew 18, verse 10, he said, See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that the angels in heaven, those angels that are with these little ones in heaven, they continually see the face of my Father in heaven. Does God care about communicating with children? Yes, I believe God speaks to children. I believe that he comes close to them and makes his presence real to them and that he wants to show them his heart, his heart of love. Definitely, I think that many children do hear God but because they might not feel comfortable sharing, you're not going to hear about these experiences. Or perhaps in their childlike way, they try to share that with an adult. And an adult might not understand what the child is saying, and they kind of slough it off as childhood imagination. But the scriptures say that Children do hear God's voice and God does speak to them. Both the prophet Samuel and Jeremiah were called of God to be prophets when they were just boys. You can read this in 1 Samuel chapter 3, where the boy Samuel was serving the high priest Eli. And Samuel was a young boy. His mother had dedicated him um, to Adonai. And Samuel uh, would be living in the temple. Uh, one night, Eli was sound asleep. Uh, his eyesight was already very bad. He was getting quite old. It was before dawn and the sanctuary light was still burning. Samuel was still in bed in the temple of God where the, where the Ark of the Covenant rested. And God called out, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, yes, I'm here. Then he ran to Eli, saying, I heard you call me, here I am. Eli said, I didn't call you, go back to bed. And so he did. This happened two more times, and finally Eli realized that God was calling Samuel. So Eli directed Samuel, go back and lie down. If the voice calls again, say, speak God. I'm your servant, ready to listen. So Samuel returned to his bed, and then God came and stood before him exactly as before, calling out, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, I'm your servant. I'm ready to listen. Jeremiah heard God's voice when he was a young boy. And you can read this in the first chapter of the book of Jeremiah, the Jewish prophet. Briefly, I'm going to read the first couple of verses, chapter four, I'm sorry, chapter one, verse four through six. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I set you apart, appointed you prophet to the nations. Then I said, Alas, Adonai Elohim, look, I don't know how to speak, for I'm still a boy. You know, God looks at people's hearts, even children's hearts. He's not concerned about someone being smart, having it together, or being super knowledgeable. God is always looking at people's hearts. We look on the outside, as the scripture says. Man looks on the outside, but God looks at the heart. In his heart, Joey sensed God was a loving father that was reaching out to him. He could feel that God wanted to fill the gap left by the lack of parents. Joy, by God's great grace, knew that God was the Father that would be able to help him throughout his life. So he opened his heart to God and cried out for help. 
He did what David, King David did. King David wrote in Psalm 18, verse 7, I'm in distress and I call to Adonai. I cry out to my God out of his temple. He heard my voice. My cry reached his ears. David had his challenges with his father. When the time came for God to anoint a new king, Samuel the prophet was sent to the house of Jesse, David's father. And Samuel asked that all the sons would be brought forth so that he could anoint uh, one of his sons. And Jesse didn't think that David was good enough to even come to the gathering. So he never called David, um, who was out taking care, tending the sheep. And yet God knew David's heart and he was God's choice to be king. Again, God knows our hearts. Sometimes God knows our hearts <laughs> better than we know our own hearts. Mishpoha, do you know how greatly God loves you? He does love you profoundly, like no other person can do in this world, not even the most caring person. And God wants to speak to you. He wants you to know that he loves you and he wants you to be free to speak to him. He wants to hear your voice, answer your questions. He does hear your cry and he wants to help you in life. He's looking for that sincere cry. Trust him to give you the support that the most his most loving heart, father heart, can give you. Trust him to bring you the hope that you are seeking when you feel that there is none. In the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4, 4 verse 10, it says, We have our hope set on a living God who is the deliverer of all humanity, especially of those who trust. Today, will you trust your life and heart to Mashiach Yeshua? He's there waiting for you. His great love is there for you. He can give you the hope and whatever you need in life better than any person in this world can. These are steps of faith for you. Oh, step up, step up Step on to those stones of trust I draw you closer to me I promised to never leave you forsake you no I will not keep your eyes on me don't look to the right or to the left and don't ever look back there is nothing there for you I'm the one you're seeking I'm the one that's your peace He named me He named me This is the one you're looking for It's me
for listening to Tikva Radio Show, The Voice of Hope. If you have been blessed by this program and want to join us in sharing with others the hope of Yeshua HaMashiach, a gift of any amount will be appreciated. You can donate and contact us on our website at tikvaradio.com. Once again, that's T-I-K-V-A-H radio.com. Thank you for joining us, and God bless.